So Ray Vargas scores a split, was it? Decision over Mark McSayo. And a well-deserved one, in my opinion. But it looks like maybe Mark had one judge in his corner. Didn't think the fight was terribly close, but it was very competitive. Wasn't scoring it round by round, but it felt like Vargas was just a little bit ahead in more than enough rounds to take this one. Both guys, as predicted, came out punching. That's just what they do. And whereas Vargas was the lead puncher, Maxaya was catching him with some really fast, really nice, really flashy counter punches. And but rather, it wasn't until the ninth round that he was able to catch him perfectly. You know, as well as he could, and put him down. So, you know, Maxayo looked good for his part, looked better to me than in any other fight that I've seen. He really stepped it up, quickened up his feet, his hands, his timing looked good. But what lost him in this fight is... The terrible footwork he has, that useless bounce he has, and it was a little annoying to me that Abner Maris was praising him for his bounce, saying that he likes when the guy bounces when it's completely and utterly useless, right? It's not even, it's not really part of his strategy either. I mean, maybe he uses it to, you know, get into some kind of a rhythm but if that's the case then that's exactly what makes them easy to time right because look when he's bouncing right i i say it's not part of his strategy really because when he's bouncing he's not throwing punches he's just shifting the weight while jumping up in the air from the left to the right foot and he will do this usually four to six, four to eight times, right? In the same place, in the same spot, and then he'll come forward or move back or whatever, right? So whenever he's bouncing, you just punch at him. And that's what Vargas was doing. Now, that forced Maxayo to sometimes shorten up or quicken up that bounce and try to counter. But it's that... You know, there was always that split-second delay that made it ineffective. Even though he was, Vargas was forcing him to stop bouncing because he was throwing punches at him. And Maxayo was answering, but it was just a split-second too late, right? And him being a counter-puncher, looking to time you, timing, right? It's all about timing, and that's... Uh, it, it's so frustrating watching these guys bounce and just waste energy, right? The commentators remarked that he looked tired. Yeah, because for three rounds of every 12-round fight, he's just uselessly bouncing up and down for no reason, right? And so, again, when he's bouncing, that's when you punch at him if you're in range. Or you time... You know that as soon as he stops bouncing, right? When he's not bouncing, in other words, that's when he's throwing. So the window in which he will be throwing punches at you, right? The time frame is at least, it seems like it to me anyway, 30% to 40% shorter than it normally would be, right? If he were just staying planted or gliding or, or shuffling his feet, right? So that gives you time to relax a little bit. And that tells you exactly when he's going to attack you. Or the time frame within which he will attack you, right? So, so that allows you to, you know, set your feet. Maybe get an angle. Uh, take a little bit of a breather. Readjust yourself, right? Refocus, whatever. That gives you the opportunity to... Prepare yourself mentally and physically, right? Tactically. 
And then when Maxayo stops bouncing, then you go to work, right? And in that little instance where he stops bouncing and starts advancing forward to get at you, right? Because you're the taller, rangier guy. He has to come to get at you. As soon as he does that, that's when you punch at him. Or you punch at him when he's bouncing. Or you punch at him when he stops punching and starts to bounce, right? Or when he's coming at you, you feign him which makes him bounce in many instances, and Vargas was doing this, right? You feign him, which pushes Maxayo out of his boxing stance and into that stupid bounce, and then you attack him. And Vargas did this all night. He timed that bounce in a variety of different ways. He knew when to punch. He knew not when not to punch. But, you know, credit to Maxayo. He was quick enough to, to still be able to counter Right, but it just it was just that split second too late or or maybe too early sometimes, and it, it was it was Vargas dictating to him, right it wasn't Maxayo setting him up very much, right, or being planted, waiting for Vargas to attack him, and then just quickly reacting to it, right? He always had to deal with this bounce of his which slowed him down just enough for for him not to be able to hit Vargas perfectly. And when he did hit him really, really, really well, it still wasn't, it was just, you know, that split second off from being perfect. But the, the chin to power ratio was definitely in favor of Maxayo, even though both guys were swinging for the fences, sitting down on their punches, committing to their shots, right? Um, and he had the stylistic advantage because counterpunchers beat boxers, right? Boxers open up, counterpunchers wait, right? They play defense with everything else being equal, right? They play defense, and then they counter you when you're opening up, and you're def not defenseless, but you're open. So that's why counterpunchers beat boxers with everything else being equal. But it wasn't equal because... Vargas is the more skillful guy. And even though Maxayo had the chin-to-power ratio advantage, skill won this fight. Because skill took just enough off of Maxayo's shots and timing and power and accuracy and all of that where he couldn't deliver that knockout blow. So... I said he had a puncher's chance, and it sure looked like it, but a little more than that, right? But ultimately, it's it's a, it's a small, minor thing that maybe he can fix. I don't know. It could be like that tick that little Santa Cruz has, right, where he shakes his hands and, like, Taps his, taps his trunks with his gloves, you know, that, that little thing that just can't help themselves. They do, and they just can't help themselves, right? But if they can fix that stupid bounce of his, stupid, useless bounce that cost him the biggest fight of his career, right, this guy will be so much better um, because he has a lot of good things going for him, uh, except it seems like for three rounds of... Every fight, he's absolutely and utterly useless and a sitting duck. You know what I mean? And it's not like it's three rounds in a row where he just starts a fight three rounds down or uses, loses three rounds no matter what, right? It's, it's, it's spread out over the course of 12 rounds just enough to make him lose all of them, potentially. Right? And he can, if, if he can take that out and completely fix it, he will stand a much better chance of winning all 12 and knocking a lot of guys out. But it was a very good performance by Vargas. He used his superior skill, mostly footwork, uh, to outbox, outmaneuver, um, set up, time, and take advantage of his less skillful opponent. That's my video. Thanks for watching.